This is the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Show, presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. Here's Bandamel, open three, no good off the back of the rim. High for the rebound, put back up and in by Gary, right over the top of Noel with the offensive board. Greasel with the ball on the right side of the floor, goes baseline, lays it up and down, lost his defender. Nobody picked him up and he got the lay-in. Jamarcus pushes the ball across the timeline. On the left side of the floor, the three by Breitenbach. Got it! Breitenbach off to a great start. Our first CBA three of the game. And the Huskers close the lead to one on the three ball. Bandamel escapes and d- does a double-handed dunk r- r- right past Noel. Johnson drives the ball, puts it up. No no good. Follow up, up and good on an offensive rebound put back by Breitenbach. Breitenbach with a career-high 11 points tonight. Gary to Lawrence shoots the three. Got it this time. The second three of the night. Another CVA three for the Huskers. The Huskers have it. Bandamel's got it. Has a screen by Walker, drives the ball, puts it up, scores it! Nebraska comes down with the ball. Here's Vandemel. Deep right corner, three ball. Up and good for Jamarcus Lawrence. Another three, a CVA three by Lawrence. Here is your host, Jessica Cootie, on the Huskers Radio Network. Well, happy Monday, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on this Nebraska men's basketball show. I'm Jessica Cootie, and joined for the first time this season by assistant coach Ernie Ziegler. Well, welcome. Thank you, Jessica. You found us all right? Yeah, without question. Well, we have you tonight, and then I think here in a couple weeks. You you got your shows pretty quickly back-to-back here in the next few weeks. Yeah, I think so. I think we'll be right back at it in, yeah, two weeks. Well, how fun was that locker room, the ride back from the overtime win at Minnesota? Uh, it was very fun. Um, you know, it was not quite as uh, uh, electric as uh, the win, our other row win at Creighton. But, uh, you know, I think our guys are getting used to it. So that's a good thing. And this is the first uh, win in overtime in a conference a conference play for Nebraska since 2001 and so I think it probably showed two down the stretch that this is a veteran group and they could handle that kind of moment right yeah it was really refreshing for particularly for our older guys to fight through that adversity that came about you know having being down getting a lead losing it them hitting a, a big shot at the end of regulation and then still persevering and uh, securing that road win, which is just huge for our confidence. You know, Coach Hoiberg had talked about that going into the game, about how well Minnesota played against Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, they came out and looked like they were a team that was really hungry for a win there at home. Oh, no question. I mean, you know, when you get to conference play and you get home, you want to defend home. And they came out and gave us their best shot, you know, to try to put themselves in position to get their first victory of the season and a Big Ten play. And uh, for us to go in there and just stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. And Coach Hoiberg did a terrific job of just keeping our guys poised and to get through one possession at a time. What did you think of the barn? Well, the barn is one of those historic (laughs) uh, venues, you know. (laughs) You know, I mean, I I compared a little bit to Vanderbilt being in the SEC the past uh, seven years prior seven years and uh, you know when you go to these older venues that are historic and have more of a theater setting or seating uh, situation and you're playing on these raised floors it just brings a different dynamic you know which is very eerily similar when you get to NCAA tournament and you get to play in some of these bigger uh, dome type or arenas or what have you, or football fields, they, that's, right. they, they, it's very similar. So hopefully that's something that our guys can uh, take and uh, keep our fingers crossed as we move further along in the season. Yeah, we were talking that, about that before we came on the air, and I've never been to the barn, so I wondered what it was like. And um, you said that John Gary had a good feel for it because he had been to Vandy. Yes, yeah, Juwan and I were talking about it and talking to the other guys about it. So it's definitely a different, because for guys, as hard as you want to play, you know, sometimes you might find yourself falling off the side of the, <laughs> the baseline or the sideline, so. 402-413-2400 if you want to be a part of the show. The Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned 
You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse again, 402 413 2400. If you got a question for Coach Sigler tonight, well, Derek Walker, what a performance from him 22 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. What can you say about his efforts the other day? Oh, wow. Just a grown man, yeoman's <laughs> effort. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's what you want to have seniors who have kind of going through it and, and you know he's seen the, the lows and the highs and and for him to just step up in those different moments you know that's the difference between securing those type of road wins and conference play and not and you know hopefully it's something he can continue to sustain and build upon this has been brought up but I just am never it never ceases to amaze me his vision how well he can pass the basketball for a big I mean how big of a weapon is that when you have somebody that can distribute the basketball like that well, it's huge because, you know, it's just a pressure release that teams just can't account for because the average uh, post player or five man that's matched up to him is not accustomed to getting out that far on the floor. And then his ability just to see plays, and sometimes it's the hockey pass he makes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always the pass that leads directly to the basket uh, for us. So, I mean, you know, it's a huge weapon for us, and um, hopefully he can just continue to expound upon it. You know, a lot of um – people that call games or talk about Derek Walker, talk about how he's undersized, but when he has all those tools, what, what kind of pro career could Derek Walker have? I think he has the opportunity to have a long pro career because his game is more fits the Euro game, mm -hmm. uh, probably more so than it does uh, the NBA professional game. And not to say that he can't uh, have opportunity to play in the NBA, and that's you know something that hopefully he'll have that uh, that chance. But I know he'll have a long career in, in Europe just because he's can face the basket, he can handle it, he can pass it, and you know the thing that he doesn't do is he can shoot the basketball as well. You know, and he hasn't been able, hasn't had to show it because he's just so great at creating angles and creating scoring opportunities for his teammates. But I mean, he's more than capable of knocking down jump shots, 17, 18 feet. So. When you're going into overtime, what was the what was the vibe of the team like in, in that huddle going into overtime? I think we just had a we weren't going to be denied mentality. You know, we had fought. We came out in the second half. We just said, hey, guys, we've got to give a better effort. And we came out and threw the first punch and put ourselves in position to uh, – kind of take control of the game and then you know just like most home teams you're going to have a m more fight we got one more stab from them and we just regrouped and bam came out and reestablished that uh, mentality and imposed our will to start that overtime and uh, was able to secure that win how big was J Jawan Gary there in that overtime oh uh, you know just again another experienced guy you know he's a winner he's you know and he he makes the plays that don't always come to him you know it's not like his, his number is being called but next thing you know he's crashing the glass and <laughs> there was those were two huge offensive rebounds at the end of regulation and then in overtime to put us over the hump how do you become good at offensive rebounding i think it's it's a it's an effort deal it's an effort deal i mean you you look at the best rebounders over the history of the of basketball it's a want and uh you have to go every time and you get three and maybe you go 50 times you're considered a great offensive rebounder and you know Juwan has that that mm, about him and uh, you know and, and it's just something that you just have a knack for and I think he he definitely has it you had mentioned uh you know where you came out of the second half and imposed your will and uh big time run that this team went on and there's been several games where this team goes on a run and there is not just one guy that's taking over I mean it might be five six guys that are contributing to the run how much fun as a coach is it to be a part of a team that is completely unselfish that is just giving the ball wherever it needs to go oh uh, it's very it's very rewarding from the standpoint of when you know you have six to eight guys who on any given night you know can help you be successful and it's hard for other teams you know because I mean you look at it you know we know Kase is more than capable of doing so we know Breedenbach is more than capable of doing so uh, you know and Denham Dawson you know he's had his moments here or there when he, but you know we just have guys that we know can help us be successful and the good thing is it's a testament to Coach Hoiberg is just keeping those guys focused and ready because you never know when it's going to be your turn. What goes into, and, and I know a lot of it is the personnel, and uh, some of those guys were, most of them were already here when you got here, but what goes into 
getting a team to buy into that because uh, th this day and age everybody wants to get mine and uh, the figures and the averages and the stats and, and all of that but to have guys that have bought in and, and really don't care who scores as long as we're getting the win as a as an a group effort well i think it's something that starts you know when you're preseason, even in back in the summer when this team first came together and when guys get the chance to spend time with each other and start to like each other is much easier for them to share the wealth. And a lot of times, you know, when you're on teams and it's, you know, guys, there's clicks and, and, you know, hey, you know, I don't really mess with that guy. And you can see it. You see it on the floor. You know, any, uh, anyone that's a real uh, connoisseur of basketball and you look at it, he's like, oh, that team's not really together. Well, that's not the case here with Nebraska basketball. And, you know, that's a testament to Coach Hoiberg and our staff and, and our players, first and foremost, that it's about the group. And hopefully, you know, that we can continue to sustain it, enhance it, and put ourselves in position to win a few, a lot more games. What has it been like for you to join the staff and be here at Nebraska? You know, it's been great. You know, for me, I've had a, uh, the privilege of working at a lot of different programs, uh, you know, f from UCLA to to Pitt to Mississippi State, you know, being a head coach myself at Central Michigan and when you come to situations, you know, the most important thing is being around good people. And that's the thing that, you know, just is so exciting for me is that Fred Hoiberg is a great coach and even better person. And, you know, Adam Howard, Nate Lesnar, uh, Matt Holt, uh, Luca, all our guys, we, you know, you get along and, it's, and you put your ego aside. And, and that's what, you know, the successful programs that I mentioned that I've been a part that's it. It's not. A, it's about one thing: making sure Nebraska basketball is successful and Coach Hoiberg is successful leading our program. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about that too. I mean, how do you go about? Because you have have a ton of experience, been a lot of, in a lot of different situations, or with a lot of different programs and styles. I'm sure. So, how do you go about joining a, a staff and finding your niche and and you, what you contribute your role? Well, for me, being that I'm, you know, the experienced guy, you know, sometimes as young coaches guys get so caught up in the trying to find their way and hey this is my role on the team and don't you say this and don't you say that and for me you know I've been there done that I've I've called timeouts in games I've coached professionally overseas or what have you so it's not an ego thing so when I, I kind of you know uh, looked at looked at the situation and seen how different guys were in different roles as I got here and then it's just about finding your way and being um, uh, a, a tool to help in the in the areas that need help and when the areas someone got something hey okay yeah you got that but not getting caught up into your own ego of oh well I know more than you I've coached here I've coached right. in the national championship game you know I'm not one of them guys that you know boast about you know where I've been and could easily say hey you haven't done this you haven't done that because at the end of the day when that happens on staffs there's friction, there's separation, and it feeds over to the kids, and then all of a sudden you're not winning games like we won Saturday, you know, a one-possession game, overtime game. And, and that's how you do it when everyone in the trenches is together. So Coach Hoiberg has long been known for as, as one of the great offensive minds in this game. I mean, Sam Griesel said it when he first came in, how much like even just being in a timeout and he draws up a play and he's like, okay, that's – that's genius. That's going to work. Even Adam Howard talked about the first time getting to pick his brain on that. What, what was your perspective getting in there and getting in the film room and, and working with Coach Hoiberg on the offensive side of the ball? Well, you know, I think the thing for me is seeing just how wide of an array of different scenarios he's ready for. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times you, you kind of get in a comfort zone and you say, well, hey, I've always done this in this situation. And as a coach, a lot of times you, you know, or you feed off of, hey, when I, were, when I was a player, you know, like for Coach Hoiberg being an NBA player, you know, it'd be very easy for him to say, hey, when I worked, when I played for Larry Brown, he did this. Or, you know, I've worked for a coach and he was a Bob Knight disciple. Well, Bob Knight always did this. And coaches get fixated on what someone else had done. Whereas Coach Hoiberg, he just has a smorgasbord of, 
of, of, <laughs> of sets and plays, and he just, you know, is very – and at the same time, he's still always asking because to be successful, you always have to be a sponge and you're always learning as well. I mean, he'll, he'll actually, hey, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think about this? What, what's your thoughts on this? So, I mean, it's just been very uh, inspiring to see a coach that just has such a wide array of offensive ideas, and uh, which is why he's so successful. All right, got to work in our first break here on our Nebraska men's basketball show. But again, 402-413-2400 if you want to be a part of the show. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com. Member FDIC. More with Coach Ziegler coming up right after this. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. It's harvest special time, and you can save $3 per foot or $3,900 per quarter mile system now on a TNL pivot system. Pivots worked long hours this season battling dry weather to save top dollar corn and soybean crops. But did your pivots work like no other? If not, it's time to invest in a reliable, safe, low maintenance TNL irrigation system. Hydrostatic drives move these durable workhorses continuously across fields. So get an irrigation system that works as hard as you do. Contact TNL Irrigation, your local TNL dealer, or visit us online at TLIRR.com. TNL Irrigation Systems like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. Husker students on the debate team and Bateman Competition Public Relations team earned national championships this past year, marking a first for each program. The debate team claimed victory with one of the youngest teams in the country, while the Bateman Competition Public Relations team won their championship by building a PR campaign for the Lymphoma Research Foundation. Pickup truck, sports car, motorcycle, minivan, townhouse, two-story, farmhouse, fixer-upper. What you drive and where you live is different for everyone, so it's important to have insurance that fits your needs and is just right for you. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that which is why our agents help you design a comprehensive auto, home, and life insurance plan. Insurance that fits just right. See shelter agent Joe Methy and Carney, Jackie Rowan in Lexington, or Megan Fales in Cozad today. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. 
Find your next truck at Woodhouse Buick GMC. No matter where you're heading or what tasks need tackling, there's a premium and capable GMC truck that's perfect for you. Make a statement on the job site, out in the town, or wherever life leads you in the powerful and distinctive Sierra 1500. Or elevate your driving experience in the adventurous and innovative canyon. Explore our inventory online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com or visit our indoor showroom today. Woodhouse Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash huskers. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High V stores where right now kids can eat free. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres. Solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to our Nebraska men's basketball show, I'm Jessica Cootie, joined by assistant coach Ernie Ziegler here this evening. And we have the national championship on, and our TV's here in our studio before this thing gets kicked off. Who you got tonight? Going TCU. You and uh, Lee Corso. <laughs> but Lee just put on a, a baseball cap, not even the horn frog head. Yeah, maybe it was a little too heavy for him. So the you, horn frog fit. You yeah. like TCU though tonight. Yeah, partly because my son's a graduate of TCU, and, you know, so I'm going to go with him and the Horn Frogs tonight. A good friend of mine, Jamie Dixon's a head basketball coach there that I worked with at Pitt years ago. So just those are my ties to it. So that's you a why. college uh, football fan? I am, very much so. Yeah, I love college football. I love football, period. Yeah, look forward to the NFL playoffs here coming up next week as well. Who's your NFL team? The Steelers, and unfortunately, we couldn't get a W out of somebody, and we came up short, but we finished 500. Tomlin hasn't had a losing season, so. Listen, <laughs> you have no idea. Like, a little inside joke here. So, we just had a producer, Tim, that just left, and he was a Steelers fan. And Andrew back there, our producer here tonight, big time Steelers fan. All so, right. both of them would talk Steelers all the time. Then we brought on Damon Benning to be the color analyst for our football broadcast, and he's a Steelers fan. <laughs> and now you're a Steelers fan. I've never been around so many Steelers fans in my entire life. Like, what the heck is up with all these Steelers fans here in Lincoln? Oh, uh, yeah, black and yellow. <laughs> yes, indeed. Why are you a Steelers fan then? Oh, man, when I was a kid, you know, the Lions were so bad. I'm from Detroit. And um, when the Steelers in the early 70s, I was an 8, 9, 9, 10 years old, and they started winning, and I just loved Franco Harris and Lynn Swan and Mean Joe Green and Torpedo Shell. I can go on Jack Ham, Jack Lambert, <laughs> you know, all those guys. So I've just been a Steelers fan. And then I lived in Pittsburgh two different stints when I was assistant at University of Pittsburgh, and so it was just great. Yeah. Did, did you play football? No. Well, up until the ninth grade, when I had my growth spurt and they started hitting my knees, I left it alone. But, nice. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, back to basketball. One other thing I wanted to ask you about the Minnesota game. So again, last week, Coach Hoiberg came in here and addressed the free throw shooting and that they were going to go to the NAPL and, and do some things. And that he's like, I'm trying literally everything. 16 for 21, much better from the free throw line on Saturday. No question. No, it was, and it was a great idea of what, what Coach to take them over to the NAPL and you know we went over there coach Hoiberg and coach Howard and myself with our guys and you know and did, did just made our guys focus a little better and uh, I know exact particularly for Derek you know the big thing you know that we noticed and we were talking to him about is you know just keeping his eyes focused on the target you know a lot of times guys had their routines and some guys like to look down at the basketball as they're dribbling it and then finding the rim as they're coming up versus focusing on the rim as, they're, as, as they go through their dribbling routine, what have you, if it's one dribble, three dribbles, whatever it is. And so uh, I think that uh, combination of things, you know, really 
obviously helped us because you don't win games like that if you can't make your free throws you yeah. know, down the stretch. And uh, hopefully it's something we can now continue to build upon as we move forward. Fans have been listening in, and, and even I haven't even been over to the NAPL. So can you maybe take us inside there, and, and what's, what goes into that? Like, what happens when you go to the NAPL lab? Well, I think, you know, more than anything, you know, it's almost like, and I'm not a big uh, uh, video game guy, but they have the same uh, type of technology that they use to for these uh, players in the video game. So our guys get all these different... Um, I don't even know what you call them. Uh, things put on their body all over. Like those little... Uh, those little silver... Yeah, like, those uh, disc things. Yes. Yeah. And they're all over. They're on their head, on their arms. on, And then they go through their shooting motions. And then they're able to play those movements back to them and show them in real time and slow motion, hey, this is where your elbow was out. This is where, you know, you were leaning left, more left than right on your shot as you're going up or what have you. And, um, you know, sometimes uh, when you see those things and, and come back and be able to really study them, obviously it's, it's helpful. And, um, it's, you know, and we use that technology and, you know, just in terms of the loads our guys have in practice on a day-to-day -day basis and, um, and which helps their recovery time. So it's, uh, you know, it's a state-of-the-art thing that makes Nebraska athletics and for us, Nebraska basketball, a really special situation for uh, our players and hopefully for prospective student athletes. I, I was going to ask you about that too because Coach Horberg talked about that. A lot of NBA uh, teams and organizations don't have an NAPL lab like this. So have you worked around a place or in college basketball that has anything like this? None at all. And I, you know, have been at some of the top programs in the country. No, it's a very unique thing and it makes this place on top of just being in Lincoln and 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 uh, our Nebraska and our fans here in in Nebraska just makes this place that much more special and it's just about getting kids to recognize it and see how those things that we have like the NAPL can just help enhance your opportunity to reach your ultimate level of success here at Nebraska. Right. Uh, I know there's a, a lot of things that go into recruiting and and the hey showing and NAPL I'm sure is, is part of it too like hey look at all these resources and that's one thing that coach Hoiberg said about you when he brought you on that everywhere you've been along the way you've been an excellent recruiter and throughout all the years what goes into that because I mean it changes so much from year to year and with all the transfer portal and then you got NIL and and there's the way that kids are but yet you still maintain being really good at recruiting what, what what's gone into that for you? I think first and foremost is relationships, you know, although there's other uh, intricacies now in terms of NIL and, and things of that sort, but it still comes down to relationships, connecting with people, uh, having a genuineness uh, about what you're talking about what you're what you're telling them how you can help them and the head coach that you're working for in this case coach Hoiberg and just being genuine about how you're going to connect with them and and people at the end of the day I don't care if it's basketball recruiting if it's you know here working in uh, entertainment or if you're in the business sector you want to be around and deal with genuine people mm -hmm. and that's what how I try to go about it, and that's why I've been a been blessed to have longevity uh, in this business and, and having uh, expertise in recruiting. I saw somewhere where um, you have a big passion for high school and high school coaching and, and all of that. Why, why, why the passion behind high school? Well, for me, that's where I got my start. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even have gotten into coaching if it wasn't for my high school coach, uh, Robert Menifee, uh, back in Detroit. He was a longtime coach at Detroit Cody High School, where I played. And, and uh, you know, he got me into coaching. I mean, I got through playing and came home. And just like a lot of kids at 23, 24, 25 years old, you're trying to figure out what's next. And I was working at AAA Michigan at the time. And uh, I was coming to pick my brother up. My father had just passed away. And... And uh, all of a sudden, I had all this li these life situations upon me. But he said, hey, you're coming up here every day to pick up your brother. Uh, why don't you help me? <laughs> and the next thing I know, I'm coaching. And, and so it just – and so when you start from a love from it and helping kids, you know, I think that's why, you know, the high school level is, is so pure in that, you know, you're doing it for the love of it and trying to help kids be successful at whatever they're going to choose to do. So uh, that's where my roots are. 
That's awesome. So a lot of people know all along that they want to be a coach. You didn't. No, I didn't. I, I wanted to sell cars, to be honest with you. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, um, was, well, Detroit, uh, right? That's, yeah, I was that's in the Detroit. Motor City, yeah, motor city? In the Motor City, I wanted to sell cars. And uh, I was actually in the ins insurance sector at AAA Michigan uh, as my full-time job when I started coaching part-time and, you know, what have you. But you know, things change and you find your passion. And that's why, you know, they say, well, even with kids and you start school, hey, you come in and you say, yeah, I want to major in this. And hey, you, your passion changes, your vision changes. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But once you find that passion for what you love to do, you know, you, you go after it. And I've been blessed to be able to do so. And again, you've, you've made multiple stops at some of the top programs in the country. How did that Journey. So you, so you go into it the way that you just did about, hey, why don't you help us out in, in high school? How did your journey unfold the way that it did where you wind up at some of the best colleges, wow. college programs in America? Man, it's, it's really intriguing because, you know, like you say, I started on high school and then a buddy and, my, and I uh, started an AAU program, which started me to start have relationships and meeting coaches or what have you. And then I went overseas because of another relationship with a friend of mine, coached as a head coach in China and and uh, Saudi Arabia, and you know, seeing parts of the world, and then getting an opportunity to be at Kansas State. And that was partly because of my relationship with uh, Sonny Vaccaro, who's a great friend and one of the godfather of grassroots basketball. And he uh, got me started in, in connecting uh, at Kansas State. And, and from there, you know, went to Bowling Green a year. And then, you know, because of my connections between Sonny Vaccaro and China, uh, I hooked in the mutual people who knew Ben Howland. And Ben Howland offered me a job at Pitt. That's how I was at Pitt. That's how I get to UCLA. We were very successful at Pitt and win two Big East championships, two Sweet 16 runs. And he gets the opportunity to go to UCLA and say, hey, you come with me. <laughs> we go there and, you know, we have a tough run our first year and had to lose the season. But second year, we are in the NCAA tournament, losing the first round. Third year, we are playing for a national championship, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I've just been truly blessed with those opportunities. It is amazing how the trees of coaching and how many connections there are, you know, with the coach in any given way. There's so many different, I guess, people that are connected and, and that in this business, this industry, it's a small world, right? Oh, no question. It's such a small world. I mean, it, even if you're not directly connected to a s specific uh, basketball circle or tree, you end up indirectly connecting because mm -hmm. people, people, if you they, if people have to hire or be involved with someone that they don't know, then they want to know that the people that they trust that may know of them, they're going to say, hey, that's a good guy, or this guy, you know, he does it the right way, or this guy is a guy you can trust, what have you, because ultimately you just want to be around people you can trust and are not going to try to circumvent the head coach. And, you know, when guys and younger guys, this is what I try to tell younger guys all the time is, you know, just be patient and do your job and stay in your lane and be uh, respectful of, of the people that you work for and, and, and make sure they're successful. Because that's how you continue to remain gainfully employed in the business. <laughs> and then that's how you open up opportunities for yourself when people know you're someone that they can depend upon and trust. Great advice. All right, we got to work in another break here on our Nebraska men's basketball. Still time for you to be a part of the show if you would like to. Either a call or a text, 402-413-2400. This Fort Sally hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Back with more here on our Nebraska men's basketball show right after this. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, 
our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. It's harvest special time, and you can save $3 per foot or $3,900 per quarter mile system now on a TNL pivot system. Pivots worked long hours this season battling dry weather to save top dollar corn and soybean crops. But did your pivots work like no other? If not, it's time to invest in a reliable, safe, low maintenance TNL irrigation system. Hydrostatic drives move these durable workhorses continuously across fields. So get an irrigation system that works as hard as you do. Contact TNL Irrigation, your local TNL dealer, or visit us online at TLIRR.com. TNL Irrigation Systems like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota. The brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always click or call 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. 
It's the lot. Welcome back to our Nebraska men's basketball show. A couple more segments left here with Ernie Ziegler. We get, did get a text for you on the text line from Raw Progress and the togetherness of everyone in the Huskers, Huskers Hoops Edition 2022-2023. Love my guys in red. A terrific road win in overtime at Minnesota. Uh, later, Roger, go Big Red. All right. How, what's been like seeing the, the support here? I mean, I know you've been at places that have gotten a lot of sa fan support, but PBA has been pretty rocking here this season. Oh, it has. I mean, it's been very just energetic, you know, and hopefully we're going to have the same tomorrow night against the Illini. Uh, so thank you, uh, Roger, for uh, the text. And, uh, you know, the together, you say use the word togetherness, and that's what we're trying to be together in everything we do and just having a pride about, uh, representing the, the red that we're going to be wearing every time we go out there and go big red. Trev Alberts did put out a statement today. I know the last time inside PBA and even with the women's game uh, against Iowa for you guys and then with the women's game, the, the next game, there were some uh, long lines with the concession stands, but he's been working with the staff over there and hopefully going to have some solutions to help alleviate some of that. It might be a couple of games before all of the systems are in place to help that. But in a work in progress it is, or they are working on that uh, to help make that better and an easier flow for all those fans. And that's a good problem to have when you have so many fans at the concession stands. Oh, no doubt. No are, doubt. Uh, having issues keeping up with all those fans. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you, too, about, because uh, as many places as you've been, you hadn't coached in the Big Ten. So what's it been like coaching in the Big Ten Conference? You know what? I've, I've, it's been exciting because, you know, now, arguably, I've coached in all the Power Five conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, except really the ACC, but Pitt's in the ACC now. But when I was at Pitt, we were in the Big East. So, you know, so I guess I could say. Which is a power basketball conference. Conference, right. So, uh, but the Big Ten is unique in that, you know, there's, uh, there's great coaches. And, you know, there's great coaches in all those conferences. But it's much more uh, strategic and uh, from the standpoint, like in SEC, you know, you, it's about athletes. Mm -hmm. It's about athleticism, and and um, and a lot of times, you know, if you can't match up, you're not going to be successful. Whereas, you know, here you got a blend of it in the Big Ten, and it's physical, and uh, you know, it's for me growing up in Big Ten country, being a, from Michigan, you know, it's uh, full circle. You know, now to be going to play against Michigan State, and hopefully, when we go back to Michigan uh, here in uh, in a few weeks we can uh, get a W up in Ann Arbor, but uh, it's been fun. So because you've been able to experience a lot of different places, I always find this fascinating to ask coaches this, where's the best road environment that you've been in? Are you going to say Kansas? Because that's what Coach Hoiberg said. <laughs> can you, should I say, should I preface this other than Kansas? <laughs> yeah, Kansas is up there. Um, hmm. I tell you this, uh, Auburn right now is very mm -hmm. raucous. You know, Bruce Pearl has done a really good job. Uh, that 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 atmosphere is 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 huge. Um, yeah, and then you know, Kansas is probably. I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's probably the tops. Uh, uh, Tennessee is really is is a tough place to play as well their so, football stadium is one of the loudest i've ever been in yeah so yeah they yeah and you know they they have a very they i want to see the state of seats 20 20 000 people uh there at tennessee their basketball arena so that would be the other that would come to mind what do you think about ucla joining the big 10. wow i don't know that's going to be uh <laughs> For, for those uh, West Coasters coming out here to the Midwest in the winter is going to be different. <laughs> I would say that <laughs> for sure. But, yeah, that's going to be interesting, you know, because, you know, UCLA and just, you know, work being there and knowing the UC system, I heard, you know, before they, uh, I guess, got to full clearance, you know, they were going back and forth a little bit about that. And, you know, for them to separate from Cal, which is, you know, that's their uh, brother school or sister school, whatever, whichever term you want to use, 
It's going to be interesting for UCLA and USC to be coming out to the Big Ten. Also, it's going to be great for all of us when you have to go out there in January and February, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll, sign me up. I'll, I'll go cover that game. <laughs> Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing, endless flavor abilities. Are going to work at our final break before our final segment. We're going to talk all things Illinois and get set for this big matchup coming up tomorrow inside Pinnacle Bank Arena. So keep it here as we wrap things up with Coach Ziegler. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Husker fans, get your tickets now for Nebraska's next home game at Pinnacle Bank Arena. The Huskers take on Penn State this Wednesday with tip-off between the Big Red and Nittany Lions set for 7 p.m. The Huskers will celebrate Australia Night in honor of Izzy Bourne and Jazz Shelley. Get your tickets at huskers.com slash tickets or call the Nebraska Athletic Ticket Office at 1-800-8-BIG-RED. That's 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line, text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Hi, it's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. And I'm Amy Just from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, listen, HuskerExtra.com and the Husker Extra mobile app have the best coverage of Nebraska sports. Our reporting team shares features and analysis of all Husker sports along with the latest recruiting news and more. Plus, Husker Extra subscribers have access to our exclusive podcast, The Showdown, where we share our latest insights and expectations. Go to HuskerExtra.com or search Husker Extra in your app store. Download and subscribe today. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office as we welcome you back to our Nebraska men's basketball show. We've got a big matchup coming up with Illinois coming up on Tuesday. We're going to talk to Coach Ziegler about and again, uh, our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Coach did get a text for you on our text line from John in Omaha. Coach, glad to have you on staff. Having been in so many different home court venues, do you feel there is such a thing as shooter-friendly buildings, or is that a myth? Go Big Red, John in Omaha. That's a good question. Oh, that's a great question, John. You know, I think, like, when you play in bigger venues, particularly like an NCAA tournament or what have you, and it's about the backdrop, and the it's depth harder. Perception. You know, depth perception. is harder for guys. But um, I, I know one in terms of home uh, arenas. When I was assistant at Bowling Green, our uh, head coach, Dan Dockage, who was a Bob Knight disciple, he was really big on trying to get advantages. So we had our rim that we went to in the second half. Would be, it was almost like about to fall off the hinges. It was just so <laughs> loose and we would, you know, our guys could shot put it up there. And, and so, you know, I guess it all depends upon, you know, when you're at your home arena, could you control it? But now what arenas being a lot of times facilitated by outside sources, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to probably have those real <laughs> home court myth <laughs> advantages. Kansas is probably still one of those menus, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, big one coming up tomorrow night uh, against Illinois, 8 o'clock tip. 
right? Eight o'clock tip. Uh, Coach Hoiberg and has preached, hey, you got to protect home court. So uh, I know not, this is a big one for this team. They've really embraced that. But what have you guys seen out of Illinois as you've dove into that that film? Well, they're a very athletic, uh, physical team. Uh, great depth. Um, Coach Underwood is is you know one of the better coaches in the in the league and you know they're going to be a huge challenge they've had a great non-conference schedule had some great non-conference wins got the got their first win uh in big 10 play here at their last game so they're they're feeling good about themselves and so you know but the challenge remains the same as coach hoiberg has stated we have to defend the vault and um cut people off and when they come in the vault they don't leave with a W. <laughs> Love that. They shoot a lot of threes. Uh, only Penn State has shot more threes than them. Is that that's pretty characteristic? They they're gonna yeah. jack it up. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna jack it up. They have some really good shooters. Uh, uh, you know, the Terrence Shannon and uh, Matthew Mayer, uh, very good shooters. Uh, so they they really look to try to put you in rotations. And you know, we're gonna have to be disciplined and really uh, contain dribble penetration is gonna be huge because if we can keep them from allow, causing us to help uh, and help on you know, dribble penetration is gonna put us in a position to be ready to, to better contest their shots. And hopefully just like Iowa, put, our, put ourselves in a position where we're making them take a lot of contested shots. Terrence Shannon Jr., one of the top scorers in the Big Ten. You mentioned him uh, over 17 points a game, nearly 18. What's the key in slowing him down? Man, we're gonna have another have a, another really group effort in containing him. You know, it's going to be you know obviously our best uh, defender, uh, Emmanuel Bandam, will get the the uh, task of of guarding him. But you know, we're gonna have to be really in tune with our rotations, with our stunts, and. Uh, Make it very uh, hard for him to get good looks at the rim, and and then and secondly, and probably most importantly, keep them to one possession. You know, and being really physical and blocking out and putting ourselves in position to get out and transition and get some easy offense for ourselves. Coach Hoberg said today, I think he was on a Big Ten show that Emmanuel Bandamel is one of the better on-ball defenders he's ever coached. Uh, what's been your perspective on on Emmanuel and how he's been able to lock down on the defensive end? I mean, he just. You know, he has a toughness about him, and, and he has a calmness as well. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's very much like the Grim Reaper in terms of defensively, <laughs> you know, because he, he just kind of just keeps coming at guys. He keeps coming at guys and keeps coming at guys, and he's able to, to pressure, but he's also able to contain guys and, um, and make it difficult for them um, and not be comfortable in, in the things that they're trying to do. So, you know, he's the head of the snake for us, and... Uh, you know we're we're really excited and happy to have him, obviously, but more importantly, I think you know he's taking on this next challenge, which is Terrence Shannon. All right, so Coach Weber has talked about too that on the whiteboard you guys have a list of keys every single going into every game, a goal that is going to take what what it, what it will take for you guys to knock off any given opponent. What are the main points to beat Illinois? I think first and foremost is containing their dribble penetration, not allowing them to. Uh, get downhill on their drives and create opportunities, create help situations. Uh, I think contesting, we have to contest to have spirited contest on, um, on their shots and uh, locating their shooters. And thirdly, uh, you know, controlling the boards and not allowing them to get second and third opportunities. All right, well, that's gonna do it. It wasn't too bad, right? Oh, no, not at all. Really enjoyed it, Jess. Well, thanks for coming in, and we'll look forward to having you back here in a couple of weeks. So appreciate your perspective, and, um, yeah, we'll go get a, another W here tomorrow night. Yes, indeed. That's the plan. Defend the ball. Everyone come out. Go Big Red. Love it. All right. For Ernie Ziegler, I'm Jessica Cootie. And, again, uh, men's basketball hosting Illinois. 8 o'clock tip tomorrow. We'll have the pregame show coming up for you here on the Huskers Radio Network with Jake and Kent starting at 7 o'clock. So tune into that. But also make sure you're there inside the vault. You just heard him. It's important for this team to protect the vault. All right. We got another hour of Sports Nightly coming up next. Keep it right here. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue.
Ohio. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams. 